Hello and welcome. Uh, this is a follow-up to the if-then statement. In this video, we are going to form the negation. Um, so if you have not seen this video, um, go back to the if-then statement video and then just watch that one. Okay, so we have the following statement. If you graduate from college, I'll buy you a new car. So we have the condition, you graduate from college, and we have the consequent, I'll buy you a new car. All right, and then we went over the truth values and we found that you are false, meaning you've broken your promise when the condition right here is true, but the consequent is false, meaning you didn't follow up with what you promised. So now what I want to do is I want to go over how to form the negation of this if-then statement from up here. What I'm going to do next is we're going to take a look at this truth table up here, and then we're just going to, there's four scenarios, right? We have one, two, three, four, so four total scenarios. And what I'm going to do is write out what has to happen in each scenario, because in order to break the promise, uh, stuff actually has to have happened already. So if you take a look at the first one, you graduate from college and you buy a new car, or I'm sorry, and you get a new car. And we said that that was a true statement. And that's what, rep that's what this sentence or statement down here represents, right? You graduate from college and you get a new car. So this represents this scenario, okay? But remember that we also said, we already said that it was a true statement. And remember how negations work. A negation has to be the opposite of your original if-then statement. So it has to be the lie, okay? So we actually know that the negation is going to come from this scenario right here because this is the one where your broken promise lies. Okay, but we're not there yet. So this represents the first scenario. So how would I represent the second scenario, this one? Okay, in the second scenario, you graduate from college, right, because that's what we did right here, and you did not get a new car, which is right here. You get a new car, which was false, and so that would mean you did not get a new car. Okay, now that's, that comes from the false part of the if-then. All right, and remember that if the if-then part is true, then the negation must be false. And so this is where our negation's coming from. All right, so this actually right here is the negation. All right, but let's just take a look at the other two scenarios. So we have these final two here, which I'll write at the same time. So I hope you can see how these two right here um, turn into these two situations. So you did not graduate from college and you get a new car. That's in this part right here. And then you do not graduate from college, which is right here. And you did not get a new car, which is that part. And again, these are still all true. I mean, if because um, they're all true from up here. Remember the negation again. The negation is going to come from when the if then is false. And so again, we only have that one time, and that would be here. So actually, this is the negation, so we're actually done. But let's go over exactly how you negate an if-then. Okay, first, let P and Q represent two logical statements. Okay, we're going to make uh, an if-then statement from these two. Okay, a very easy if-then. It uh, doesn't really matter what P and Q are. Okay, they're just two logical statements. But I make the statement, if P, think of P as like you get a uh, graduate from college, then Q, Q could be the getting a new car. And I want to negate this. And recall, the negation, or when this is, when this is a false statement, uh, it means that P had to happen, so P, and you didn't follow through with the consequent. So the negation would be P and not Q. And that's it. So once you identify the components P and Q, then the negation is just going to come from P, rewrite P, drop the if, by the way, because right, there's no if there anymore. Because remember that um, a negation, or the only way we know an if then is false, is something has already happened. So you don't need the if part anymore. Uh, so P occurred but you didn't follow up with the consequence. So you'd say, and not Q. And there you go.